Hello everyone, welcome back to the last uh, unit, the first lesson of that last unit. This is called Systems of Linear Equations. Uh, and this first lesson is all about developing these systems. So we are going to start by defining some variables and then using the word problems to create some equations and then verifying um, if a solution uh, proposed to those equations uh, works by satisfying both of those equations at the same time. Uh, this is kind of the base of what we'll be doing in all of the next lessons, um, which is solving uh, systems of linear equations. But today we're just going to focus on defining variables, making equations, and then checking proposed solutions. Uh, so the definition of a system is two equations of linear functions uh, in the same two variables. So a lot of the time um, when we're talking about problems as we move on, it's going to be X and Y. Uh, but sometimes we're going to define variables, uh, different letters like we will in this question. Um, so Allison is going to, uh, Allison received chocolates for Christmas from all her friends and family. She received boxes of white chocolates that contain 12 chocolates and boxes of dark chocolates that contain 24. In total, she received 780 pieces of chocolate. Uh, when she had finished eating all of the chocolates, uh, she had 20 more boxes uh, of white chocolates than dark chocolates. What we're going to do is write two equations that model this situation, but first we need to start with the variables. We're not going to label these X and Y. We're going to label them W for white chocolate and C for or D for dark chocolate. That would make sense, right? So in number one, to define our variables, we're gonna say W is equal to um, boxes of white chocolate and D is equal to the number of boxes of dark chocolate. We could label them X and Y, but it would be hard to keep track of what we're talking about all the time. So under that box there, we would put these two, W and D, white and dark uh, chocolates. Now for the equations. Um, so we can write the equations from uh, what we have found out from the uh, question. Uh, it says that in total, she received 780 pieces of chocolate. So 780 must be the total. And we know that um, for every uh, white box, there was 12 chocolates. And for every dark box, there was 24 chocolates. Sorry about that. Interesting, that's just a 24. So there's one equation. And she also knows that after she finished eating, she had 20 more boxes of white chocolates than dark chocolates. So the number of white chocolate boxes must be equal to the number of dark chocolate boxes plus 20. You can write that equation in a couple of different ways. But that is what we're trying to get at. Uh, well, the number of white chocolate boxes is 20 more than the dark chocolate. Allison tells you that she received 35 boxes of white. So She's saying that the white was 35 and the dark is equal to 15. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to plug these values into these equations to find out if that is correct. And what would need to happen is the left side of each equation would need to equal the right side of each equation. Let's do the easy one first. Let's do W equals D plus 20. Uh, w is 35. And that would equal D, which is 15 plus 20. Uh, 35 equals 35. That is true. So this equation works so far. Uh, let's do the other equation, which is a little bit more complicated. So we have 780 equals W, which is 35 times 12, plus D, which is 15 times 24. Uh, this would equal 780 is equal to 35 times 12 by my quick calculations is 420 
plus 24 times 15 is 360. Um, so that means that 780 equals 780. That's true, as you guys know. So that means that that equation works as well. Uh, we would say that Allison uh, is correct when she says that she got 35 boxes of white and 15 boxes of dark chocolate. Um, that is going to be what we're doing today. Two variables, two equations, checking to see if the proposed solution is correct. Let's go to the next problem. Again, create a linear system to model this equation, uh, the situation. The perimeter of a rectangle shaped fence is 158 feet. The width of the fence is 31 feet less than the length. So that right there, that last sentence tells us the two variables and that's number one, it wants us to define the variables. If we're talking about a rectangular shaped fence, uh, the two variables are going to be L, which is the length, and W, which would be the width, right? Um, there's no other variables when we're talking about the area uh, or the perimeter um, of a fence that is, a, that is in the rectangular shape. Uh, number two, it wants us to draw the diagram of the fence. So we're going to have some kind of rectangular shaped fence. I would call this personally the length and I would call this the width and we can label all of those sides. Uh, so this is number two. Number three, what it wants us to do is write two equations that model the situation. So uh, we know that the perimeter is 158 feet. So two lengths plus two widths must be 158. So two times the length plus two times the width must equal 158 feet. Uh, it also says the width of the fence is 31 feet less than the length. So the width of the fence is equal to the length subtract 31 feet. Those are our two equations that we need um, for the situation. So now we've created it. Uh, what we're going to do now is verify if the length um, is 55 and the width is 24. We're going to see if that works. Let's do the easy one first. W equals L minus 31. So 24 equals, uh, let's see, 55 minus 31. 24 equals 24. So that is correct. This is true. So the bottom equation is good to go. Let's do the other one next. Uh, two times L, which is 55 plus two times W, which is 24, must equal 158 total. This equals 110 plus 48. 110 plus 48 is 158. So 58 equals 158. This is true. So that means that that equation is true. And we have verified that the fence is 55 feet long and 24 feet wide. Uh, if some of these didn't work out, then we would see that um, the answer that it gave us, the solution, is not true and not correct. It might be the case that there is no correct solution or they just gave you a wrong one. Let's go to the next problem. <clears throat> Again, we're gonna create a linear system to model this situation. So a school just like ours raised $195 by collecting 3,000 items for recycling. The school received five cents for each pop can and 20 cents for each large plastic bottle. Uh, we are going to select variables as the first step. Uh, always select variables as the first step. So um, we are going to say that B is equal to the number of bottles collected and C is equal to the number of cans collected. Easy. Uh, create a table that represents the situation. So I'm going to put my table uh, on the screen for us to see uh, because I think it will make more sense. So let's see here. We're looking at this. Um, 
So the refund for, per item, so for, per can it said that we had $0.05 or 5 cents, and for bottles we had 0 0.20 or 20 cents. Uh, we don't know the number of items that each had that we each had, right? It was, uh, this should be 3,000 actually, but the number of cans we had is something that we were wanting to find out. Uh, the number of bottles that we had is something we wanted to find out. And we know that we had a total of 3,000. Uh, the money that we raised would be five cents for every can, 20 cents for every bottle, and we know it totaled 195. From that, I created my linear system of equations. So the cans plus the bottles equals 3,000. I know that that was 3,000 items total, cans and bottles were the only items, add them up, got equal 3,000. And I know that five cents times the number of cans plus 20 cents times the number of bottles must equal $195. So I have my two equations. Both of them are in terms of cans and bottles. It doesn't matter that this is the total number and this is the number of dollars. Uh, be there both in terms of C and B. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to test to see, so this is kind of four, we're going to test to see if 2,700 pop cans and 300 uh, water bottles uh, were collected. So this is the verifying part. Um, our equations were C plus B is equal to 3,000 and 0 0.05C plus 0 0.20B is equal to 195. Let's try these out. Um, so if C was 2,700 and B is 300, as it said for the uh, 2,700 and 300 bottles, that would equal 3,000. 3,000 does equal 3,000. That is correct. So this is a good equation so far. Let's try our other one. So we have... 0 0.05 times 2,700 for the number of cans plus 20 cents times 300 for the number of bottles is equal to 195. Uh, let's see, I found this to be 135 plus 60, um, which is equal to 195. 195 does equal 195. That's good stuff. So this is true. And this equation is correct as well. So we would be able to say that C is equal to 2,700 and B is equal to 300, absolutely. Believe now, yes, there is one for you to try on your own. Um, there is this portion, so uh, you can do that part. And then there's a second portion, which I'll scroll down to in a little bit, and you can pause at each one. Um, but after you're done, uh, please um, unpause and see if you got it correct. A store sells batteries in packs of eight and four. The total number of batteries in stock is 320. There are 1.5 times as many packages of four batteries as packages of eight. Uh, we're going to select variables to represent the quantities and write a system of equations that models this situation. So this is just asking us to do all the steps essentially in one. Uh, so we have a number of batteries in stock is 320. Uh, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. What I got to do first, I got to define my variables. So I'm going to say E is equal to the number of eight packs and F is the number of four packs. Now that I have my variables um, shown, I can start writing my equations. So I know that there's a total of 320 batteries, and that would be eight times the number of eight packs plus uh, four times the number of four packs. There's one equation. And I know there are 1.5 times as many packages of four batteries as eight. So the packages of four batteries is equal to 1.5 times the number of eight uh, packs that we have there. So there is our other equation. We have modeled the system of um, the, the linear systems. We can now go down to the second part and verify if there are, if E is equal to 30 and F is equal to 
20. Let's find out. Um, let's see, did I make all this right here? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, let's do. Let's try these. Let's do them in a different color. So let's do this one first. We've got 320 is equal to 8 times 30 plus F, sorry, 4 times 20, which is F. 320 is equal to 240 plus 80. 320 equals 320. So that is correct. This so far is a good equation. Let's try it in our other one. We have F is equal to 1.5 E. F is 20, which is equal to 1.5 times E, which is 30. Um, 1.5 times 30 equals 45. So this is not true. So that means that this equation does not work. So our solution is not verified. Therefore, incorrect solution. There might be no solution at all. There might be no two numbers that satisfy both of these equations. There might be one and we just haven't found it yet, but this is definitely not E equals 30 and F equals 20. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know, but there is an exit slip and quite a few questions for you to do. Thanks very much for watching.